Hello, I'm Scott Morrison, a lean consultant for the lumber and building materials industry. To embrace lean, I teach companies how to find, identify, and then systematically eliminate sources of waste in their manufacturing, service, and delivery processes. This video walks the viewer through the steps we took to optimize the layout of a large lumber yard. By studying and then changing the locations of hundreds of products stored in the yard and the adjacent warehouses, we reduced stager travel times by 30%. The lumber yard we studied is located at the Hyannis, Massachusetts headquarters of Shepley Wood Products. Shepley Wood Products was founded by Tony Shepley in 1978 and is the premier supplier of lumber and building materials to professional contractors on Cape Cod and the islands. Shepley has over 100 employees spread across three locations and we began their lean journey in 2011. This project launched in August of 2012. Tony and the management team realized that their stagers were taking a long time to gather lumber and building materials for their delivery trucks, requiring them to use more trucks and resources to keep pace with demand. There were four primary sources of waste. First and most obvious was that the stagers were routinely driving their fork trucks several hundred feet to pick and deliver high frequency products to the loading area. Because of these long travel distances, either delivery trucks were idle waiting for staging to be complete or additional trucks were deployed to the loading area, holding for orders to be picked and staged. A popular decking material imported from overseas is ordered by ship container and at that time was delivered to an off-site warehouse. This added significant time and cost to storing, maintaining, and then transferring materials in small truckloads to the main yard. And finally, some products were not stored adequately enough to protect the quality of the product, creating situations where good product had to be either discounted or culled. With these sources of waste in mind, we scoped a project that had a three-part purpose. First, Tony and his team wanted to significantly reduce distances traveled by the fork truck operators, who were spending more time driving the fork trucks than actually picking and staging products for delivery. Next, we wanted to have logical storing locations where every product was placed within a family of similar products and at the same time, each product had adequate protection from the weather. And third, we wanted to transfer the off-site warehouse materials to the main yard so that building could be repurposed for other uses, including generating revenue as rentable space. The project team represented a cross-section of the entire lumber yard, plus we added Mark Ritz from Crowder Auto Stack who designed the racking we would need later in the project to store the relocated products. The first project objective was to collect and analyze data on the distances traveled each time a hit was recorded. A hit is defined as a single line item product, whether it is lumber or a building material such as a box of nails, which a picker had to drive or walk to a location in the yard pick the item, and then deliver it to the staging loading area for the delivery truck. The second objective was to summarize all of the hits and distances over a two-year period to determine which items had the highest frequency of hits, meaning those items were picked the most times in combination with long distances traveled per hit. An overhead view of the lumber yard illustrates the spread of lumber and building materials across a plot of pavement that is roughly 800 feet long by 300 feet wide. Each major storage area was identified by an abbreviated code defined by the purchasing department. This allowed the team to link each product with a storage ID. We then measured the distances traveled by a fork truck from each storage location to the center of the existing staging loading area. Now it was time to review the quantity of hits against the distances traveled per hit. Generally following the 80-20 rule, we gathered data on over 700 unique stock items that were picked over a two-year period, but chose to track just the top 20% of items picked, which covered 80% of all hits recorded. Some items in the top 20% were there just because of the frequency of hits, and some just because of the long distances traveled. So we settled on the list of items that had a combination of high frequency of hits that also traveled long distances. Taking the total number of hits per item and then multiplying that number by the distance traveled per hit, and then summarizing all 232 unique items, we discovered that the fork trucks had driven nearly 19,000 miles 
during the study period. The top 20 items in terms of their combined scores revealed several surprises and gave us a huge opportunity to rethink how the yard and adjacent warehouses should be laid out. Given this information, we could then assess the current state of the yard to determine where we could suggest improvements. The distances traveled strongly indicated that lumber and building materials had spread to fill empty space far away from their point of use, which is the staging loading area. It was rewarding to see that there was consistency in the top items from year to year, boosting confidence that we would be relocating the right products. We could now turn our attention to where product families should be relocated. Each storage location was color-coded depending on how many products in that location were on the combined high-frequency long-distance list. Notice that several of the red and orange coded locations, which indicated relatively low demand, were located close to the staging area, while many green and yellow coded locations were far away. This situation was almost completely opposite of the desired locations. We want to have the high frequency items as close to the staging loading area as possible. Also, we evaluated each item to determine the best storage method. During these conversations, we began discussing the best location and contents of two auto stack structures, one outdoors for storing high volume lumber and decking that could be quickly picked by either a stage or loader or by a drive through contractor, and one indoors for storing sheets, again for quick picking. There were two potential locations for the outdoor auto stack, and once we chose the best location and orientation, which was adjacent to and in parallel with the lumber warehouse, Mark Ritz started designing the structure. Mark also designed the indoor auto stack for the first aisle of the lumber warehouse, which in turn opened up significant storage space to allow the relocation of the offsite inventory. Next, we turned our attention to the best layout and presentation of the staging loading area. We decided to move the center of the area slightly closer to where the auto stack would be built and designated loading boxes that matched overall lengths and widths of the truck beds. With the construction and relocation of staging loading settled, we then turned our attention to systematically identifying and then migrating product families to their new storage locations. The Shepley Yard team completed these steps as time permitted over the course of 16 months to minimize disruptions to contractor and delivery schedules. Once the indoor and outdoor auto stacks were completed and space was made available in the lumber warehouse, the off-site warehouse inventory was permanently transferred and the building was made available for rent to another local company. A previous cost center now became a source of revenue. Six areas of the yard were repurposed as a result of the project. The highest volume framing lumber was relocated to the area immediately across from the truck staging loading area with bunks located at the midpoint of each aisle to facilitate faster assembly and strapping. The outdoor auto stack was oriented so both drive through contractors and pickers could logically move up one aisle, turn, and then move down the adjacent aisle to ease traffic flow. The hardware shed, originally slated for an overhang area adjacent to the millwork warehouse, was erected instead at the head of the auto stack, reducing travel distances even more than originally calculated. The indoor auto stack was placed immediately upon entering the first aisle of the lumber warehouse. This eliminated the need for drive through contractors to snake through three aisles to pick up plywood sheets. The auto stack also rotated sheet stock 90 degrees to make it much easier to pull stock out, virtually eliminating the need for fork trucks to drop pallets down to floor level. The engineered wood, which is received and stored in lengths up to 60 feet, was transferred away from one of the closest locations to the staging loading area. This move cleared significant space for the framing lumber, which is picked at a much higher volume and frequency and can be more compactly stored. Finally, a large area was reorganized for long-term storage of roofing shingles, allowing purchasing to make strategic buys to support Cape Cod's demand in late summer and fall. What were the results and the level of satisfaction with those results? It's best at this point to hand off to the Shepley team to give you a video tour of the new layout. Okay, if you guys want to talk about the uh, changes in the yard, the operations going. Sure. Um, one of the things that they did a couple of years ago is we had a um, gentleman by the name of Scott Morrison come in and go over and look at um, the efficiencies in the yard. 
Um, I believe at one point it was 18,000 miles over a year that our forklifts drove going back and forth over the yard to pick the different products. So to be more efficient, we started to reorganize the yard and culminates in Tony's crown jewel here is the auto stack. Um, there's 232 items on the bottom section of the auto stack that used to be stored out in the yard. There's 95% of the items now that we sell that are located in this one small little footprint now between the lumber warehouse, the auto stack, and the KD in the yard. So we're traveling probably roughly 12,000 miles, 30% more efficient in our in our picking. We, we, we were able to determine through this process that we were spending 50% of our time on a forklift driving. Yeah. So now so, it's... Right. So now it's all in one centralized location. Um, we just finalized moving the hardware shed. Last bit is the uh, the lead that we'll get down here, but everything else is in this one centralized location. Um, Tom Diaz. Come on down, Tom. Come on down. He likes to make a grand entrance. Tom, Tom Diaz was, was, was hired specifically to come in here to set the auto stack up, and he has some uh, specific goals he's working on. You want to share what the... Uh, this is all going to become. Uh, basically, what we try to do here is use it as a training center as well for yard personnel and salespeople and customers. So when a new salesman comes in to the company, they can come out here, work for a little bit, learn the products, or if they go into the purchasing department or something else. We were talking about who did that here in this group. Uh, it also serves as a teaching tool for the yard personnel, as I said earlier, because a lot of these uh, guys are due to the industry, they don't know the difference between some products and others. So with that, we try to show them the proper way to pack the material, ship the material, what the differences is, what the uses are. It also helps us in the end with the customers, because they have a good experience that they're talking to knowledgeable people here in the field. And we also get to educate the customer, maybe as well, up to upsell them to a better product. And we're going to use part of it also is going to help in the picking process too. So help right. assist with the picking. So this is a, the open goal of this is make the experience for the customer a much more positive experience that's going to be not only help to pick the product, but also maybe make some selections in it. We use it for an opportunity to train our internal forklift operators on product, as well as other employees in the company. And we're able to put everything under cover. And we're able to make it easily reach, so hopefully the experience for everyone is going to be a much more positive experience. So this is a, a to go along with kind of centralizing all everything. It's, these guys were picking all the orders here and traveling all the way down there to get their hardware. So to reduce that, we built this building, and now everything in here is going to be uh, there's going to be a, a staff member that works in here that will pre-pick these orders for us, the hardware. So Kenny and dispatch will send an order down here, and they'll pick the hardware, put it on a pallet wrap it, label it, so that the yard picker just has to come grab the pallet and go. It's gonna it's gonna work going it work hand in hand with the auto stack as well. So again everything now is under one roof in the hardware shed. <coughs> when we were when we were expanding a few years ago when we were really expanding growing we had a we had the ability to carry some new inventory and as we as business got a little slower that's how things get cut them out of whack a little bit. And that's what we did when we brought this gentleman in. He actually looked at the actual touches of each product. So we graded the touches by how much how often something was picked. And that's how we decided how to that's the yard down and put things in the right area. So this is gonna again we, we, we believe this is gonna improve efficiencies by a, a, at least thirty percent, which enables us to do more and do things quicker. We think the number one touch guide in the yard. Number one touched. That's the most hits. Forklift. So it's, it's tar paper. I've never in a million years guessed that. It's not quality, it's how many times you pick it.
So this is another auto stack rack. We basically have taken everything. We used to have an off-site building called Area 51 where we kept a lot of our backup product. We, we took all our product out of that building and brought it back here. So one of these bays, which th this, this used to be two-way customer um, access. They could access all products from both sides. Put in this rack there and has minimalized the amount of space we need to do that with. So now this bay is for customer access. That's it. Everything on that side of the uh, warehouse is all backup. It's for our guys to get and pick product from. This is all customer access. So, so everything should be in this bay. Everything should be in this bay. So what, it, what, it, what does it enable us to do with the auto stack? As you saw, as we walked in, there's a lot more shingles on the cover. We're able to put more things on the cover, more things in a condensed area. Our backup stock or across and over there, we used to have to drive down the street a mile and a half, pick up, load, bring back transfer back and forth. Now we're able to warehouse it right here. It's a lot more accessible. Uh, it's more efficient. Far more efficient. And we used to have to use a forklift if a customer wanted to go on, for yeah. example. We had to use a forklift. Yeah, some, some of that product was up so high that the only way to get at it was with a forklift. So the customer couldn't just come in and grab it himself if he wanted. Now, same thing. This is all set up with the auto stack roller. It all just slides right in. So the ultimate goal of changing all this stuff and re re realigning everything was one is efficiencies. The other, the other big thing is uh, we want the customer experience to be better. So when you drive in now, there's somebody here waiting to help you, and the idea is to have a knowledgeable person waiting to help you and make it quicker and easier for someone to get in and push them out of here before it was spread out. The customer had to travel that extra uh, with the site. 